I have a question. How long would it take you to quit if someone on your job spit on you? Or you were working 53 hours a week but still not making enough money to pay your rent? What would you do if verbal and physical violence were an everyday thing? Or you were given more work to do because a bunch of your coworkers just quit? Or every time you got off, your boss expected you to stay behind for a couple of hours and work? for free. If you're a teacher in America, these are daily realities, which explain why more than 300,000 public school teachers and other education-related staff left their jobs between February 2020 and May 2022. That's 3% of the teaching workforce. And it's not just in America. Over in England, record numbers of teachers are quitting. Big growing concerns over the impact of naughty pupils on the teaching profession and educational system. Schools in the UK are facing a significant teacher retention crisis. A staggering 44,000 teachers left their positions last year, marking the highest quit rate since 2017. The complaints are all the same. Teachers are sick of poor pay, poor benefits, being overworked, burnt out with heavy workloads. They're scared of school shootings and are sick and tired of the violence from the students and their parents. The emotional toll is wreaking havoc on their mental health, so they're quitting. And if you think things are bad now, they're only about to get worse. Let's talk. Hello everyone, my name is Rogan and this is This Bahamian Gal. On my platform, I do social commentary and reaction videos. I encourage my audience to have private conversations in public. If you are new on my channel, welcome. So glad to have you. And if you are not new on my channel, welcome back. And if you're not new on my channel, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. And if you like what I'm doing here on my platform, do consider becoming a member. All the details are down below. Now let's get into the video. Today, we're gonna to be running down the top reasons why teachers are quitting all over the country and leaving sooner than planned. Well, let's start with the number one reason why teachers are quitting, compensation. You know, for people who are responsible for educating the world, teachers are grossly underpaid. In the United States, the average hourly pay for a waiter is $15.80 an hour. The average hourly pay for a retail sales worker is $17.08 an hour. And the average hourly pay for a teacher is $22.40 an hour. But unlike teachers, Waiters and retail workers aren't required to have undergraduate degrees or certification to work in their jobs. And in teaching, higher education doesn't necessarily translate into higher salaries either. Many teachers with bachelor's and master's degrees are earning sometimes less than retail workers, forcing them to take on second and third jobs just to make ends meet. Some work as servers, some work in fast food, and some even sell plasma. Yes, plasma. In 2018, Time Magazine published a cover story detailing just how teachers came to be so underpaid in America. One cover said, I have a master's degree, 16 years of experience, work two extra jobs, and donate blood plasma to pay the bills. I'm a teacher in America. Another cover said, I have 20 years of experience, but I can't afford to fix my car, see a doctor for headaches, or save for my child's future. I'm a teacher in America. The final cover said, my child and I share a bed in a small apartment. I spend $1,000 on supplies and I've been laid off three times due to budget cuts. I'm a teacher in America. Average salaries vary from state to state, but according to World Population Review, Mississippi has the lowest salary at $47,162 and New York the highest at $92,222. But starting salaries tend to be much lower and far below most states' livable wage. Check out this archived Reddit post from 2022 that echoes similar sentiments. I thought I was making a reasonable salary as a teacher, but I just took a job as a fast food restaurant manager and it pays significantly more than teaching. Huh? Oh my God. The crappy pay is just one of the reasons so many teachers are quitting. The other reasons? Hmm. Take your pick. I found the job to be nonstop, never ending criticism. I found it to be thankless. I found it to be draining. The fact of the matter is we don't respect teachers and we show that based on how we pay them and how we treat them. To look at teachers as do-gooders and nothing more is absolutely insane. We've heard this narrative for so many years that, oh, teachers don't get into the profession to make money. They do it to help the kids. They do it because it's their passion. These people are hardworking professionals, so they should be compensated adequately. Quite frankly, we've gotten too comfortable with that narrative. I mean, is this a profession or is this charity work? I quit my job after 18 years in the moment, in that moment. I'm looking at the world of teaching and all the teachers that I know that are in tons of pain, that are suffering, and they're in just tough situations. They're wondering, how do I get out of here? What do I do? A lot of it has to do with society's guilt trip 
towards teachers that we have to take it. We have to do it for the kids. There were many times when I was just at school, I was there for the kids and for no other reason, because when you're on the outside, it's kind of probably like a lot of other professions. When you're on the outside, you think you know what goes on. You know, the, the comment about teachers having summer. Oh, what do you guys have to complain about? You have summer off and, uh, you know, all that stuff. Until you're on the inside, you have no idea. Workers know how much an employer values them by how they pay them and how they treat them. And if you don't pay them and treat them well, then they're going to seek opportunities elsewhere where their services are better utilized, compensated fairly, and where they're valued. The goal might have been altruistic for them entering the profession, but this is still a profession and they still need to be able to earn a living. There are teachers who complain about not being able to go on vacation properly because they can't afford it or start families. A lot of them have said, I've held off on having kids because I just can't even afford to take care of myself. They're taking care of other people's kids, but they can't even afford to have their own. And I feel like in some respects, we look at teachers as nothing more than glorified babysitters or social workers. Teachers make less than doctors, lawyers, engineers, cybersecurity specialists, but when you think about it, there would be no doctor, lawyer, or cybersecurity specialist or engineer without a teacher. Who teaches them to do their job? But we need to start demanding that we are treated better, that we are not just thrown under the rug by parents, by society, by the superintendent, by the principals, by the administration, all those people that make a lot more money than teachers do, but have very little impact inside the classroom. Teachers are not given nearly enough credit for what we do. They want to call us professionals, but they don't treat us like professionals. Well, let's move on. Let's talk about how teachers are overworked. According to a survey by Rand Corporation, teachers work an estimated 53 hours a week. That's seven more hours than the average working adult. And most of them are overworked due to staff shortages. Many of their colleagues have quit or have put in their resignation letters, so they're about to quit. That means that these teachers who remain in the system are gonna be the ones who are expected to pick up the slack. Another complaint that I hear a lot from teachers is that they're expected to just do extra work for free all the time. They're expected to be coaches after school, as tutors, stay behind when kids have detention, if they still have detention. And that survey that I mentioned from Rand Corporation showed that 25% of these teachers are not compensated for doing that work. Huh? And those who do get compensated, the money is so minuscule. I have friends and family members who are in the teaching profession, they're teachers, and they talk about having to take on second and third jobs, or some of them want to take on a second job, but they can't because the, the school has sort of taken over their whole time. So they're there early in the morning to the afternoon. And every, even if they wanted to leave after school to go to another job, the school is like, no, 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 we need you to coach. Where are you going? No, this is an expectation of your job that you're going to be here to, to coach or do other other uh, assignments that are given to you. Whenever I was teaching, I was always told you could do more. There's yeah. always something when they observe always. you, there's one thing that they will always pick that you could be doing this. And you're just like, okay, but I'm exhausted. This is my life. This is what I dedicate right. everything to do. Right. You've come in, you've seen a one hour lesson and you're telling me there's still more that I can do. Right. Right. And in anything else ever I've done outside of teaching with all my social media, everything, all I ever get told is, you are amazing at this. You are yeah. destined to do this. Whereas teaching, they'd say you're a great teacher, but you can do X, Y, Z. Right. Yeah. And it just right. became so like, there, there is never enough that you can do. And I remember being sat in a meeting and they were like, we have these three voluntary committees. You don't get paid for them. But right. you should, yeah, but if you I'm literally get, on three voluntary committees. <laughs> but, and they'd say, but if you want to get highly effective in this column, then being on a committee is Which one is of the bull. things. No, and that's it's like, ridiculous. Well, pay us then. Like that's right. what right. I want to be paid right. for my time. One of the other things that they complain about is the lack of boundaries when they are off from work. Teachers complain about getting text messages late into the evening on their days off. Many people say that it's not beyond the principal to contact them late in the evening or at early morning hours or on the weekend. And a lot of them are forced to be in group chats. So the group, the group chats from the work are constantly going off and it's just like they can't separate themselves from, from school. Teachers are also expected to work fairs and extracurricular activities. And when they decide that they do not or they refuse to do it, then they're either bullied or um, overlooked for promotions or just treated poorly on the job. Three of the teachers that I spoke to say they plan to quit in the next six months um, and just come out of the profession altogether. And one of them said that they would give the profession one more year just one more year and then they're gone. When I told them the teaching was no longer my passion, that's when they started saying, well, then you shouldn't do it. Let me tell y'all, let me let me tell y'all what's up. Majority of those people in that school, majority of people in every school, especially the older people are trapped. They're trapped because when they wanted to leave the teaching industry, when 
they were in their youth, maybe five to 10 years in, if not sooner, we have way more options. I got way more options. Like I'm not trapped. And I let them know that I told them I'm 24. I'm not trapped and I'm a go getter. You see, you see what I'm saying? I have options. They did not like that. And they tried to make it seem like you shouldn't be here if it's not your passion. How come when I when I ask y'all how y'all doing, y'all like, I'm, I'm here. How come when, when we get back from break, oh, it was too short. How come when we come in um, on the Monday, you just talking about how you count down to Christmas break and you count down to summer break and Lord, these kids get on your nerves. You don't sound passionate. You don't even sound interested. So you're just there for the check. And don't let the industry, don't let education, don't let anything, any, any type of service or duty um, profession trick you into going against your interest your instincts anything just for the sake of of the kids the school is not your baby you can love these kids and you can even love this staff but priorities and so me i kept that all in perspective like i'm i was i wasn't losing myself in the job when i'm off the clock i'm off the clock stop texting me when i'm off the clock i'm off the clock i'm not checking my email it's, it's, it's things like that it's boundaries that we are more able to set in this generation the older generation is they're not accustomed to that but i only say that because if if i was to be super on fire and didn't know how to pace myself the way that they did i would have been burnt out no i wasn't burnt out when i quit i actually quit on a i decided i was going to quit on a, on a tuesday and then i put my resignation on a wednesday and i eventually had my last day on friday because i actually was going to do my 30 days my friends will try to say we can wrap this up now we can girl the 30 days was a courtesy like don't lose yourself as as it got closer to the to the semester ending, I was like, I I, I don't know if I can do another one. I, I don't know if I can do another one. I, I've literally poured every ounce that I have in these kids. Like, I don't know if I can go through another semester of going through my class expectations and consequences, you know, learning new kids, uh, pouring another uh, 110% of my energy and, and everything I, I can't do it. I'm, I'm I'm tapped out. Like I'm already I'm drained. I have nothing. Like literally nothing else to give. There's nothing else that I can do. So let's talk about the violence that teachers have to deal with, from school shootings to aggressive students and sometimes their parents. These classrooms have become literal war zones for a lot of these teachers. And it's, and it depends also if what type of school that you're teaching at. If you're in an alternative school, it can be much worse. Teachers have not only been assaulted by their students, but also by their parents and guardians, and they say it's become an absolute nightmare teaching in the school. As of February 16th, there have been 12 school shootings in the United States. Three were on college campuses, and I believe nine were on K-12 school grounds. Seven people were killed and at least 19 injured. In 2023, there were 346 school shooting incidents across the U.S., meaning the U.S. averaged nearly one shooting every day. Texas saw the highest number of casualties among the states with 21 victims in 2023, followed by Maryland with 20 and California with 18. As it relates to assaults on teachers, threats and violence are a part of the landscape in the classroom. But what percentage of teachers have been assaulted in the U.S. by their students? A survey found that 14% of teachers report being physically attacked by students, and that violence includes punching, shoving, hair pulling, having items thrown at them, being spat at or on, to name a few. The problem is that a lot of these schools take a gentle approach with these students when they act out, when they get violent towards teachers. Teachers report that the students are rarely ex uh, expelled. Um, they have in-school suspension. Some of them will just be taken to the principal's office where they'll be given snacks and juice and then later on go to another class to create havoc. And there's just no recourse. Meantime, these teachers who are being assaulted on their job are just expected to keep on trucking. All that disrespect, they say, can even translate to physical violence. In a study by the American Psychological Association, 14% of teachers reported having been physically attacked by a student. My last year teaching, I had been out on leave twice for being attacked by students. One, I had six months of physical therapy for. I still wanted to be there. I still wanted to be with those kids. I still want to be with them today. It's just that the system not only isn't, doesn't work for us, it doesn't work for the kids, and I can't be a part of it anymore. It just bothers me that we signed up to do this. I do this because I love numbers. I love teaching kids numbers. It hurts me to know that she was attacked. You know, like, I've heard about my coworkers being attacked. 
personally myself. That was my last straw. But you hit me in the face. And as a teacher, I'm expected to just take it. There's a lot of things that as a teacher I put up with, right? right. And yeah. I um, mm -hmm. had a really overwhelming day at school and I got home and I was talking to my husband about it. And he's like, tell what is wrong with your arm? And the mm. student had just completely scratched up my arm. And I was like, I'm done. Like, I'm done. And I, <laughs> That's I, what's wrong like, with my arm. I, I'm I was, done. And it was so easy. I taught full time for almost 10 years and my 10th years now subbing. I was devastated. So I, I remember yeah. going in, it was the easiest decision. I was like, I'm burn out that was like the, the moment but i and i loved that kid was the hard thing too because i could sit there as i didn't realize he was hurting me because he, i know he was in crisis sometimes they're forced to return into the classroom with the very student who just assaulted them but teachers get hit in the face spat at get stolen from get threatened get harassed get followed to their car got get beaten up and they had to keep on trucking honestly i see fewer and fewer people expressing an interest in becoming a teacher, which is so sad because our kids are going to suffer and society at large is going to suffer. And I feel like we're about to approach this, this point of no return where it doesn't matter what uh, a government offers, it doesn't matter how much they sweeten the pot, no matter how much money they offer or benefits they offer, people are just going to be like, nope, I don't want to deal with it. I'd rather go make my money doing something else where I'm not going to be um, hurt on my job or I have to keep fighting for what is rightfully mine. I don't think we're there just yet, but honestly, I think like we are like this close. Finally, I want you to take a listen to this teacher who went off on the Board of Education. I think this was about two years ago and he just voices his frustration. Uh, I think this was recorded like during the pandemic time. It's a bit long, but it's so worth the listen. So here we go. Sean McCarroll, I'm a teacher over at North and I live down in the park. Uh, last year, I participated in a professional development session during our November PD Day. Offered by Beaumont, we were strongly encouraged to go. The topic was how to triage after the event of a school shooting. During that session, I learned and even practiced on a dummy how to pack a bullet wound and apply a tourniquet to prevent blood loss in our students. I also, to my horror, learned that if my students were to get shot in the chest, I should leave them for dead and assist those who had a better chance of survival. Now, I find it interesting. The district sponsored that for us and trusts us, the teachers who have no medical training in any capacity to be the first responders to our students' medical needs in the event of a school tragedy. Trust us to literally choose and decide who would live and die, while you don't even trust us with the educational decisions that are in the best interest of our students, the thing that we've been hired to do. The teachers in this district are experts, experts in education. We've been highly trained through advanced degrees and years of experience to make the best educational decisions for our students. I have 10 years of experience, two postgraduate degrees in education. I'm a licensed K-12 administrator and a district level department chair. I'm more qualified to make educational decisions for our students, except for one person. Everybody here has less experience or actual knowledge of what life is like in our classrooms. Like you've done to my colleagues, you've disregarded my experience, my professionalism, and my expertise and reality and substituted it with your fantasies. You're listening to them. They don't know what happens in our classrooms. They're not there, and neither are you. You sit up on this stage, which by the way, I hope you enjoy the space you have here. This does not exist in our classrooms. And you tell us after your meetings that you so appreciate and respect us. Well, I cry bullshit. You don't respect us. If you respected us, you'd listen to us. You don't appreciate us. If you did, you wouldn't make our jobs literally impossible to do. If you cared, you would pretend that you're listening, at least. I sent you an email months ago expressing my concern about our full face-to-face -face return. And I didn't get a single response from any of you, not one, not even a message received. I helped get many of you elected to this board and you couldn't even be bothered to hit reply. You actually respected me and my colleagues. You prove it with your actions. Instead, you'll make your vote tonight, basically a foregone conclusion because you're trying to ram it through in a single meeting. And then you'll get to the end of the meeting where you say that you do respect us. Last time we were here, John told you that teachers were angry. You could probably tell that that was true. He said, though, that it wasn't about the, uh, any decisions at the board level. It was the situation. We're not angry about the situation. We can't control COVID. We're angry at you. We are angry at you. And angry is a nice way of putting it. You've done more damage to our students, our district, and our profession in the last 12 months than we've seen in the last decade. Keep going down this path, and I'll be surprised if our number one teachers even stick around. I know I'm not. I submitted my resignation to 389 last week, and I'm looking forward to doing something that's going to be valued and appreciated, not lied to and belittled. Listen to your teachers. We're number one in spite of this board, not because of it. If you trust that's us to minutes. plug a bullet wound, you should trust us with that. That's three minutes.
How many teachers need to leave before you start to listen? Hmm. How many teachers need to leave before you listen? How many teachers need to leave before you listen? That's an excellent question. He's absolutely right. And uh, his question leads to my question of the day. What do you think should happen to students who get physically and verbally violent towards their teachers? And also my second question should be questions of the day is what do you think is going to happen in the next five years or 10 years as far as the teaching profession is concerned? What do you anticipate happening? I want to hear your comments. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. And, well, if you've come to the end of this video and you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps the algorithm gods to push this video content out into YouTube world so more people like you who enjoy this type of video can see it. And if you like what I'm doing here on my platform, please consider becoming a subscriber. It's so easy. All you have to do is take your index finger and put it on your mouse right there, right down below. And that's it. You become a subscriber. And if you really, really enjoy what I'm doing here, consider becoming a member. All the details are down below in the description box. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and I will see you all next week. Mwah. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that like button. Bye.